Or, uh, welcome to the uh, the first ever Greasy Alpha podcast. I'm joined today by a uh, awesome friend and a guest. He's a guest, but he's a great friend, uh, Mr. Coach Doug's Absolute pleasure for you to be here for this moment. I hope I hope this is one of many of my podcasts, but also episodes we do together. But thank you for making time. I know you're busy, uh, but you you took some time to uh to hang out with me for a little day, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you know, it's 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 one thing. Uh, one thing I learned um, rising up the ranks. You know, you got to give back. You know, and so anytime I can do that, you know, I I do toys for tots. I give blood. Come on podcasts. Anything I can do to give back. So this is like podcast for paisans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. P- pods for tots. We'll do that. We're, we're guest just... <laughs> guest spot for Guidos or something yeah. like that. <laughs> we just. I just picture like, oh, like you know, like it's Make a Wish, except you, like instead of meeting John Cena, you get to go on a podcast. Yeah, my Make a Wish would involve a lot of Italian food. So just just so yeah. we're clear, I appreciate what you're doing for me here, but I I think there'd be a lot more mozzarella involved if uh, I had to make a wish. To be honest, I would probably have the craziest Make a Wish. I would just be like, I want like a water park of melted cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I want no. all the all the slides to be big chunks of uh, deli meat, like you know, like, like like the things you like slide down on the slide with, like that needs yeah, to be yeah. a big slice of prosciutto, you know. And you're like, and you're like, oh man, that's that slide was nice, but I like the uh, I like the uh, the hot matzo better, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I I think I that's love, it, I, that's a meat, right? Matzo. No, I don't. Uh, ma- no, that, that's just short like, mozzarella. Hold on, what am I thinking? Yeah, kappa, kappa, like some kappa. So. It's that was the weirdest thing living in Hoboken. Like here in real like New Jersey people order the gabagool or the the capicola. They order the capicola. Yeah. And then I'm I'm behind them and I want to be respectful. Like I'm not gonna say, hey, give me, give me the gabagool. You know, I'm not gonna say that. But at the same time, like ordering hi, I'll have the capicola, please. Like it just it I it didn't feel it didn't make for the most authentic experience. I what? I I, I said mutz one time, and it felt like a hate crime. It felt like it felt like I was like I needed to apologize to all the, like the really nice Italian people there. Like someone was going to ask for your ID to be able to say that. Yeah, you know, it just, you know what I mean. Yeah. It was just the it's the way it's it, and it's it's almost like I like I put a soft U on it, like a you know like it wasn't a hard U, so I felt like I could kind of get away with it. But like it's, you say mozzarella, and then there but even even. Within groups in New York, some people say, "Oh, we don't call it mutz. That like that's disrespectful. We call it mots." So you know what it's, you know, it's, like we we got so we have so little to complain about these days. <laughs> as Italians, we we, we find yeah. stupid little things like people, you know, like sauce or gravy. It's like I don't know who. I mean, obviously, it's sauce, yeah. you know, but but it's Clearly. like we're, we got turf wars going on over sauce versus gravy, mots and mots. Yeah. It's it's. I mean, I'll take. The, I'll say what I'll say this. If those were the problems of America, we'd be in great shape. And it's just like, when are we going to have an Italian president finally? You know? Hey, listeners, thank you for joining in so far with this episode with Coach Duggs. Uh, if you guys are enjoying this or you think maybe you could enjoy it one day, maybe there's a little bit of potential here with what I'm doing. Hit that subscribe button for me. I'd really appreciate that. I'm on all the social handles. You guys know how to find those. Greasy Alpha, if I have to explain how to find stuff to you these days and you're very new to the internet and I'm not sure... You really need to be here anyway. Uh, but I appreciate you being here. If you are watching this, uh, hit me with the like. Throw some comments down there, too. If you like it, you love it, you hate it, you could tell me I'm ugly. I don't care. Anything like that. If you want to see some other cool guests on this show, throw it out there. I don't care who you have to suggest. I pretty much only know Coach Doug's, But, you know, you never know what could happen. And if enough people say, hey, like, we really want to see, like, Grimace from McDonald's on here or something. I don't even know how that's possible. But I'll work on it if you all really want something like that. So uh, we're going to get back to the episode. Had to take a quick break because we got in a really, uh, you know, dirty conversation about Italians. I said, you know, let's cut that out. Let me just banter for a second. Thank all the fans for listening. So we're going to jump into a really weird story uh, about me. Enjoy. Well, I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll one-up you on that. I'll talk worst timing of all time by yours truly was like go i go to a christmas party in uh like december obviously december of 2021 
right? And yeah. the uh, before I went to the Christmas party, there was there was like a Eastern European store. It was a Russian store that we went to, and they had all kinds of like Russian memorabilia. The place is called Vladimir's, if we're just being honest. And and Vladimir's, yeah, yeah. And I was blown away by how much Soviet Union propaganda like existed in this store. I was like, this is outrageous. That we're, like I don't care because at that moment in time, December of 2022. No one's thinking about that at all. Yeah. So I sarcastically bought these pins, like Soviet Union pins for like a dollar for a bunch of people mm-hmm. at the Christmas party because they were kind of comical to me. I was like, oh, look, like they're selling these at a store down the street. Can you believe that? Yeah. Well, you know, fast forward two and a half months later, that's a bad idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's only a bad idea two and a half months later. There's a there's an entire group of people at a Christmas party wearing, uh, you know, Kremlin, you know, propaganda, like uh, proudly, and, and, and people were like, "Hey, I didn't get a pin. I didn't get a pin." You know, yeah, yeah. like, and it's like, and they were, and so anyway, you know, we all kind of sometimes timing doesn't always line up, and it didn't set well. And the worst part was we were like, everyone's having such a good time with it. We're like, "Yo, next year we're all gonna show up with like big fuzzy hats," and you know, the neighbors yeah, yeah. are gonna be like, "What's going? What's going on over there?" And we're like, "Let's scratch that. Let's scratch that idea, a hundred percent." That's a true story, though. So <laughs> anyway, well. So that would be that would, from, uh, that would be know. a silly not true story. <laughs> you just you're like, oh, I need I need Coach Dugs to feel better about himself. I'm gonna make up this crazy Christmas party story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did make that up. If I was talented enough to make up that story, that'd be great. I'm just talented enough to make mistakes like that in real life. That's, yeah, yeah. That, that's what well, that I, is, do. I and I I do, I do like that where there's so many things happening now. I'm sure it probably happened in the past, but there's so many things happening now where even like parody like things are are self parodying themselves where it's i at a certain point parody is like it's it's not it's not going to be effective because there's so much crazy things happening but i do like i do like when people say like you can't write you can't make this stuff up it's like you you haven't been in my brain you don't know what yeah. i'm thinking i i make up stuff all the time you have no idea it's going to be a sad day when the phrase you can't make this stuff up doesn't apply anymore. It's someone's like, oh, yeah. no, you can. It has been made up before. We've made it all up. <laughs> yeah. That's, no yeah. more. No more unique ideas exist. It's it's what's well, and it's the same thing. It, it's it's a very like like, hey, it, I don't I guess it's an all encompassing statement. It's kind of like when you go on YouTube and like the title for the YouTube video is like after watching this video, you'll never like, after watching how hot dogs are made, you'll never eat a hot dog again. And it's like. Okay, well, first of all, that's horrible advertising because now I'm not going to watch your video. Not watching the video, 100%. I'm not watching the video, so that's stupid of you to tell me. You're out of your damn mind if you're going to try to talk me out of something that I love that much. (laughs) Like, oh, yeah, Yeah. you'll never eat mozzarella again after you see this. Like, I'm going to go find that person and take that (laughs) video down. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? Nobody should ever watch this video. And secondly, you don't know what's in my head. Again, like, I could watch that video and laugh. You have no, you have no idea what I'm capable of. I will watch your yeah. video and I'll, I'll watch it twice. And then while I'm getting a hot dog, you know, that that's actually, we, there's so much censorship, so much, whatever going on right now, cancel and stuff. There, there's, is not enough. Like there's not, there's no technology that measures title value versus video value. Like, like you're never going to believe what Kurt Herb street had to say last week about Florida state. And it's like, Oh my God, I, I got to see this. And like yeah. 19 minute video. And it's like, he didn't say a whole lot at all no. in general. Like he actually didn't talk yeah. once last week and you're yeah, like, like right, no, well, no, no well, you wouldn't believe what Kirk Herb street said. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I believe now that he said nothing. He said absolutely nothing. <laughs> so there's too much of that. There's too much of what the title says doesn't happen in the video. And yeah. quite honestly, I would trade the most graphic gory shit for just some honesty in titles like these days. Oh, it's, yeah. it's starting to get a little bit ridiculous in my opinion. So what should we title this podcast? Like, you know, co- <laughs> Coach D- Doug, Coach Doug, Coach Doug's canceled after one podcast. Yeah, uh, Coach Doug <laughs> makes NBA roster, you know, or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The um, yeah, you won't you won't believe what Doug said. <laughs> yeah, you or, won't believe what. Well, Doug said. well. He, so here's the thing. Um, after after seeing what Coach Doug says about hot dogs, you'll never eat them again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I did. I, I was. Uh, I went to some like independent. Uh, like minor, minor, minor league baseball game with Frank. It was pretty much the minor, like a rec- the minorest of the. Minors. It was it was a rec league game. We showed up. Oh we gosh. were we were ten minutes late, like from when it was supposed to start. And when we pull up, 
the umpire is still putting on his pants in the par- in the parking lot. So and so we're like, I'm good. like, all right, if if the umpire is like put, he's he and he, it was just, it was just, it was like almost like looked like Winnie the Pooh, like he had he had boxers on. <laughs> he's Winnie he the like, Pooh and outside before he, he had boxers on, but he had his he had the full like padding for the chest, so he had the full padding for the chest with like the polo over it, but then no pants on, and it was it was the weirdest thing. Uh, but I'm like, all right, well if he's still in the parking lot getting dressed, we're obviously not too late. Um, but they let Frank do an at bat, and of wow. course, okay, it, you would believe what what happened. <laughs> and Frank hit a dinger. Frank hit a <laughs> Frank hit a fucking nuke. <laughs> yeah, and so I titled the video like "You won't believe you won't believe like uh, you won't believe Frank's first at bat," and so many people in the comments were like. He struck out like I that's absolutely believe him. Like, OK, so you're part of the problem is what you're trying I am, to tell I am. I am part of the you're problem. one of those people. I thought I liked if, you. You think, you know, somebody, <laughs> you know, until they until they come and, on your your very first episode yeah. of your podcast and, and ruin. And, don't meet your heroes, folks. That's what the message of this is. Don't meet your heroes. You don't believe what your hero said. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess. Uh, yeah. I guess it's different when it's supposed to be satire. Maybe that's the yeah. maybe that's my problem. Maybe everything is supposed to be satire, and I just don't know it. Maybe I I am maybe I'm the dumb one. I'm not even sure if I know what satire means, but <laughs> I think I've heard that word a lot. So I think maybe, I think maybe it is it's all like funny stuff. Maybe yeah, maybe it's, like, it's yeah, all. Com- I have I have I have realized that though, where it's like we might be getting too deep for a podcast. Um, but I hope not. It, it's either something is either a comedy or a tragedy, right? Like it's it's either it's that's those are the two things. It's either a comedy or a tragedy. And go on, go on. I'll entertain this. You only know whether it's a comedy or a tragedy by the end of it. Like the ending is what determines whether it's a comedy or a tragedy. And so, I you okay, could go you, on. you could be going through your whole life. You could go through your whole life thinking it's a comedy and then it ends and you're like well that was dark or you could go through your whole life thinking it's a tragedy and then the way it ends you're like oh that worked out that's actually a comedy i think you started smoking weed and you haven't told me about this yet that's, that's I, what it sounds I, like. I did i did it one time at Stu finer's place and i'll i i won't do it again because and it might he might have given me too much for the first time but he ordered steak sandwiches. The steak sandwiches were amazing. But I sat there. My whole face was numb. I don't know if you've ever had like a numb face while you're eating a steak sandwich. The whole time I thought I was chewing on my tongue. I, I, thought, a, I thought I was eating my tongue and I didn't stop. At least once a quarter, I numb my face and have a steak sandwich. So like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> I, I don't, dude, I don't know. I've chewed on my tongue before. It sucks. That, wait, were you actually chewing on your tongue, or the meat just tasted no, like a tongue? No, it was just it was. I was eating a steak sandwich, and in my head, while I'm chewing, I'm like, I could be, I could be biting my tongue right now and have no idea. But I oh, didn't okay. stop eating because the steak sandwich was it, so honestly, good. Honestly, it just sounds like you went to the dentist. Like it doesn't sound like you smoked. It sounds like you went to the dentist. I mean, I guess if you're in the dentist sandwich. chair contemplating, am I eating my tongue right now and not knowing? I don't what know, kind dude, of dentist do you dentist. go to? What kind of what, what, the, what kind of dentist are you going to? I've had like my uh the you know like like the, they had to like put like a thing in the back and then they numb the side of your mouth and then they 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 tell you like hey like you know p- keep the gauze in your cheek for a couple hours because you're gonna like start yeah. chewing on your tongue and your cheek and I always take it out and I always end up like I'm like chew I'm like chewing on my mouth apart it's it's ridiculous yeah yeah that's yeah I, I've that's never that might be worse than thinking I'm biting my tongue and still doing it. And, and you honestly, knew you, biting, you knew you were biting your tongue and you still did. It, and in the moment, it's a tragedy, but afterwards, it's a comedy. So it kind of it, all it comes all back to your it point. It it all all, yeah, I mean, it it's a shame that more comedies and tragedies don't just do more work together because, like, like could you imagine if Saw did, like, Saw 9, but we're going to throw a little humor in it this time? Like, I, a little Will Fer- like, if Will Ferrell was the Saw guy, I've never seen a Saw, to be honest. Um, yeah. But I just imagine if Will Ferrell was in there with maybe a little Danny McBride action and like I don't know, throw like a cameo by like JB Smoove or something. Yeah. That's a movie right there. And it could still be horrific, but like 
If you make me laugh, I'll go watch it. I'll go watch I, it. I, I do really, I'm really enjoying the idea of like a horror franchise where they just like throw in a comedy. Mm-hmm. It's like, like Saul has like what, t- at least 10 parts now. What if like Something Saul like 4 was just like this hysterical movie? I think it, it just there's not enough of that, and it's like an untapped market, so maybe that's the thing we got to get into. I don't have a horrific mind, though. That's the problem. So, like, my torture would be, like, someone getting tickled, you know, in a basement <laughs> for, like, and because yeah. that's my fear is getting tickled. Like, somebody, like, trying to steal my family or, like, take money from me, and they're, like, you know, and I'm just, like, ah, the, here's, the, here's the code yeah. of the save. I'll you know? tell you like, the code. Yeah. They put a gun to my head. I'll be a tough guy. I'll be like, you're not gonna fucking do it, right? Yeah, yeah. You know. But if, if someone starts like they tie me up and start tickling me, I'm dude. I'm done. I'm, I'll I'll tell them my parents <laughs> where my parents live and you know their biggest fears. <laughs> get everything yeah. right away, I, man. I'm I'm not a gore fan at all, and that's I mean one of the re- I I stay on the uh, you know Twitter has Twitter X whatever they have the for you page and that, like they they have two yeah. different feeds uh, yeah. the following and the for you. I stay off the for you. Because whatever, whatever I start, whatever I watched, or like one or once, one time or t- twice before, the for you page, especially now, it's all gore stuff. I just, I don't like gore. I stick to comedies. I don't like scary movies. I will say this though, the movie Hostel is. Have you ever seen Hostel? I've stayed in a hostel, but I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> the movie Hostel it probably came <laughs> out in like oh six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. No, so you, you, you would get the. You, plot. you want to know the horror movie that exists in every hostel? Is this? There's just a bunch of people snoring. That's every I'm, fucking I'm night. that guy. I'm is that, that the guy. movie? Is that if that's the premise of the movie, then that's accurate because you show up. It's two, three in the morning because you're sleeping in a hostel. You're not going to sleep early. You're doing yeah. you know dumb shit. Yeah. You get you get in. You kick off your shoes, which you have to keep in your bunk because apparently people steal shoes in hostels. Another you know, gory thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then you close your eyes, you lay down, and all of a sudden you hear the symphony of snores. Like so, like Skrillex or, or David Guetta or whatever should go like remix the sound of snores that you hear in a twelve yeah. person hostel in in wherever you know you're staying. It's it's I, it's horrific. I was definitely that guy in Dublin. Because uh, when Landon and I, when when Landon and I went uh, to Ireland, we we stayed in Dublin for I think two nights, maybe three, um, but we had to catch the flight to Germany because we were going to Munich for Oktoberfest right after Dublin, and so I might have been asleep for like one or two hours, and when I woke up, Landon's like, "Hey, we got to get out of here. They've been, they've been talking about you for about half an hour now," and like these <laughs> these, these two these two guys down the hall were just no down the I say down the hall like down the room. Because it was like twelve yeah. bunk beds in one room, but Blandon was like, "Yeah, they they've been talking about you for a while. We got to get out of here." It was like four thirty like, in the morning. He's like sharpening a blade. He's like, "We're gonna take him out." Because <laughs> yeah. like, it, yeah. it does have a striking resemblance to like what I imagine like a prison would kind of be like, as far as like the quality of the bunks and stuff. Like it's not like the the nicest setup. It's just cheap and convenient. Like that's yeah. the whole. Idea. Yeah, it was, it was like twenty five bucks. I'd, yeah, except, dude, I'd go sleep in one right now. Like if there was something fun I could do. I, I, I pretty bad. much am. <laughs> that'd be cool if we just created a hostel for all of our friends to go to once in a while. Like that'd be, I'd like that. Like it's like our own little sleepover place, kind of. Like that'd be. Yeah, cool. I've I've been trying to get a group together of like maybe four to eight people to buy a home off of the trail in Tallahassee. I've been I've been I've been trying to get people together for like ten years now. Yeah. That, I mean, that'd be great. Long term, that's an incredible idea. Uh, yeah. Count me in. I'm, I'm number two in the investment. You know, train. I think that'd be a good idea. The only, I mean, okay. the only thing is, there's, there's, what, twelve, six weeks out of the year that I want to go stay at that house. Like that's, and that's, yeah. The entire, the entire spring semester and summer, it can be rented out to students. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, good. All right, so you're in. Yeah, I'm in. Count man. So the movie, the movie got, hostel. Okay, yeah. Get back to get back to the the horrific I, story about. People I I don't like gore stuff at all. I I I always watch comedy. I never liked the the disgusting blood everywhere. Hostel had slit Achilles tendons, like eyeballs Ooh. coming out, and like pus and blood and everywhere. But the ending, how it ended, there were like these. There was like a, basically a gang of children, and they're like they're in like the Eastern Bloc, so they're in like somewhere somewhere in you know Uzbekistan or something, 
and there's this children, there's like this, the leader of the kid gang, again, like 12 year olds, maybe younger. It's a badass kid. That's a badass like kid. Yeah. Kendi. Kendi. And so like the, this guy who's escaping gives the guy like a bag of candy. And because he gave him the bag of candy, the, this gang of eight year olds killed the people that were following them. And it was just, even though they killed him in a gory manner, because it was like an eight year old in like a leather Fonzie jacket with a bag of bazooka bubble gum, it was hilarious. And I was like, I like this movie. Yeah. Well, that's also like, I mean, dude, if you, t if you told me like, here's two scenarios you're about to face in your life. One involves a gang of adults. The other one, a gang of children, like give me the gang of children all day. Like, yeah. Like for first off, I don't totally understand the thing about the candy, but like, that sounds like the easiest way to defeat a gang of children. It's like, you guys want me to go buy you something from a store? Cause I have money. Like it could be, I, like I could $20, whatever you want, yeah. like each of you, you know what I mean? That, that'd be yeah. easy. Also eight to 12 year olds. I mean, I lower my shoulder. I'm taking six, seven of them out. Like there's no, yeah. I, I don't have to throw a punch. I could run through them. Like I, I've never played it down a football in my life, but I imagine you give me the rock in front of a bunch of eight to 12 year olds. I, I'm, I'm laying them all out. I'm going 99 yards yeah. to the house. Like no problem at all. A bunch of adults. Not a, it's not as likely. Not, yeah. not as likely. How many? How many? Okay, so you say so you're playing Pop Warner football. You right now, your size. You're playing Pop Warner football. You have pads and everything. How many kids in like the twelve and under? Like how many twelve year olds could you take out? Like if you're running down the field for a touchdown, are they? Are, how many would it take to stop you? I'm I'm gonna go this route with this because the thought of just absolutely possibly like ruining someone's life forever for this for this like mr beast like gimmicky kind of <laughs> kind of like event just really makes me sad because i i would get there and be like i can't do this like you know i'm a i i have a heart as big as my ass like you know that like yeah, I, I couldn't i couldn't heart. go i couldn't go through with it is is the problem so let's let's put it this way the amount of yards i would get in four quarters like 15 <laughs> minutes right each yeah, yeah. I, I'd crack four digits. I'd probably rush for over a thousand yards. The touchdowns, I mean, endless. How much? Like, it's a matter of how many times can I run up and down that field? I was that you would get tired before you, like, you would you would be exhausted before they would stop you. Oh, I mean, with two minutes left on the clock in the fourth quarter, I'd put the I'd put the hat on. I'd, <laughs> that's how long I'd wait to put the hat on. The score is like <laughs> one hundred and seventy five to three, and yeah. I I, th I throw the hat on and. You know, so so that they can go take a knee, you know, <laughs> little victory I think, formation. Yeah, a little victory for me. I don't want to be I'm, I'm exhausted. I've, I've 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 hit my quota for the year. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that'd be fun. I mean, that was you like, have crying, crying mothers on the sideline. Uh, I mean, just I mean, those kids, though, you got to give it if they're still out in the field in the fourth quarter. Like, I, I mean, you got to think at some point they stop trying to tackle you. You know, just, yeah. they, they just they can't wrap you up. They can't <laughs> they ankle just, bite you. They, they just get up from the four, like three point stance. They just stand up. Just I mean, you up. could after a couple of, you know, runs like you, your jukes start to work a lot better because it takes one nasty rock to just, you know, for for you to throw, you know, pretend to throw it again. They're going to lay down in front of you. You know, it's like, it's, it's going to be like the little giants. It's like, it's going to be like the little yeah. giants. You know, like I'm, I'm yeah. fucking ice house or whatever her name was. Ice box. <laughs> Ice yeah, box. I'm the ice box. Yeah. Um, Who's the cheerleader? That's no true. <laughs> ice box. You know what? It would be fun. I'd actually love to do this. Maybe uh, I got some other guests lined up for some for some future shows, but I'd love for us to just do a breakdown of the little giants one day. Maybe we'll watch it separately. We'll like we'll like um, Twitch it or mm -hmm. something. Else watch it, and then we'll do a pod of us like talking about the things we never really noticed before. Because that's I love sure. that movie. Like it's 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 like a feel good movie and. And it's like everything. Sometimes people are like, "Oh, it's so unrealistic that they couldn't just beat that really good." Are you kidding me? Like, you like the Avengers? Don't tell me that this little league team couldn't. <laughs> yeah, get, you know, it. That, yeah. that was the whole point. It's supposed to feel good. Like, let me have this. Right? It, it, is go a, watch, it is a children's movie. Yeah, go watch Hostel. I'll watch Little Giants. They're both yeah. equally as likely. Like, right? So, like, let's just yeah. let's just let, leave it at that. You know. You know they they really um, jumped the, they really jumped the shark by telling me Ed O'Neill. And, uh, you know, his, that the other, yeah, well, shoot, what's the guy's name? Morrison? No. Is it, it's not O'Connor, is it? Uh, no, it's, it's Ed O'Neill. Cause, cause they're not, always like, I thought you'd be bigger. 
I thought you'd be bigger. He goes, yeah, that's what they all said. That's what they all said. Yeah, no, I'm talking about the actors' names. Oh, he, oh, the guy, the, honey, the guy from Honey, honey I Shrunk the, the Kids. Yeah. yeah. I could look this up. I have a computer over here. Mo- Morris? It's Let's not see. Morrison. It's the, I. It's I know his name. Come He's on, he hasn't he hasn't been out in public in years. Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So I mean, you're yeah, Ed O'Neill and Rick Moranis are brothers. Immediately, I don't buy that. Like if you really like, I don't you buy say, that. I don't buy that at all. The only thing is, and it's different because we're genders are different. But my sister is like five feet tall and mm-hmm. like a dainty lady, kind of right. Like, and I'm, you know, how big I am. So like take gender out of the equation there, there's there, there, it could happen i guess i don't know i don't know i mean maybe but but the yeah. only thing is to the ice box and we got to save this for our review of the movie the ice <laughs> box was a beast so she could yeah. have gotten the jeans that the dad didn't and he's probably a little salty about that if we're being honest but, yeah uh, she might have had a badass mom i th- no. i think we see the mom oh no the mom disappeared right isn't that he's a single dad i i don't right? i don't know if she disappeared i'm not i'm not she, sure if she, she's I'm not, not sure. there She's, she's she's not there. there. Well, well, it's a it's, kids movie. We don't need to get it's. She's not there. <laughs> it's one of those movies where like, you know, it's always the dad that goes for a pack of cigarettes and never comes home. But finally, there's a quality yeah. in this world where mom goes to get a pack of cigarettes and doesn't come yeah. back. Um, I call this I got a funny annexation of Puerto Rico. We're gonna come back for the listeners out there, all two and a half of you. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have this eventually. It's gonna be great. I do have a funny story about cigarettes, though. I I actually went. I was grocery shopping with my grandma, my 78, 79 year old grandma, uh, a couple years ago, and she was like, she was like, "Hey, can you uh, go into the the store and buy me a pack of cigarettes?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, of course. What do you want? Whatever." She tells me, and I go in there and, and I'm like, and the guy. It was it was Mavericks. It was like Maverick Gold, or I've never even heard of these. Like I don't I don't know how she knows what they are. Yeah, like it's, Sky there's Dance. no commercials. They're not in they're not in commercials or anything anymore, yeah. right? Parliament. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I tell the guy I'm like oh, let me get those like the Maverick Golds right there or whatever, and he's like which ones? I'm like I don't know. They're for my grandma, and the guy like looks at me like like I'm, <laughs> you know, I look like an adult. It's very rare. That people look at me and go like, sir, are you old enough to buy this? Right. But then my excuse is like, oh, I'm buying it for my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and he like raised an eyebrow, but like didn't really get too worried. I was like, I yeah. have to ask my grandma to like, come inside. But grandma, they don't believe me that I'm buying cigarettes for you. <laughs> like, like, come on in. Like, that never has happened in the history like of, of buying cigarettes. Yeah, so yeah. Like, my grandma's in the car. I'm buying these. For you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she, she's like, anyway. she's in Canada. You don't know her. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I got a couple I got a couple of uh of topics that have dr- grinded my gears for the past week and I, I wanted to run them by you and see if yeah, we can yeah. wrap up let's, on this. Let's um, do it. Cu- couple of things, right? So, um this this resurfaced recently. It was something from like several years back, but there was a a swimmer from I'm going to say this wrong, but like uh what's it called? Like Ecuadoria Guinea, right? The country. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? I can't say yeah, it, yeah. but um so so I guess they don't have a established swimming team out there i don't know if this has made its way to you or not but like so this guy tries out for the olympics on behalf of his country and like and he makes it the very little competition i think he was the only one and yeah. there it, it was like a situation where like the announcers were like is he gonna make it like they're like thinking like our lifeguards gonna have to go in and get this mm-hmm. like potential olympian or whatever the world record was like 40 something seconds he finishes like just under two minutes something yeah. like that and it and it, it kind of makes me sad too a little bit because i'm thinking i'm like what, like there's no sport in our country where we could just go show up and be like hey like you guys need bodies <laughs> like is there anything left that we could just go show up to because we need bodies right almost like the little giants in a way and and like be good at or is that is that just gone is our chances over like for something that awesome? i think to be an olympian no, I, I think we have so many athletes and that because that's really what it is. It's like just athletes that can pretty much they choose. They choose what sport they want to go into. And I think obviously once they're into the sport, like, you know, you would see like, you know, everyone talks about rugby and NFL. Like it's not a matter of I, I don't once they're specific, once they hit like a specific skill level or a specific size, like you're not going to see any offensive linemen playing rugby 
like at a serious uh, like high level, like a rugby World Cup, because yeah. the offensive linemen are they're just too big, they're too fat. Like they're good yeah. for short bursts of speed, but meanwhile, yeah, cause, like because because the big guys in rugby are still at they still move yeah, like running they still backs. have to run for eighty yeah. minutes, you know, um, and so yeah. it's just different. However, if you took those same people once they hit like twelve years old, and you had them like they could still both they could have easily crossed over is what I'm saying, uh, but I yeah. think I I remember that swimmer that was probably in like the two thousand eight two thousand ten Olympics. Uh, little, where, yeah, like, where yeah. Michael Phelps, I think that might have been like when Michael Phelps won all of his uh, medals or the one before that. Uh, but I remember, it, yeah, he was, it took him like two minutes to swim the laps and like everyone was waiting for him to finish. Um, yeah. And it was, it was a cool story. Uh, it, but it it's, is, it's a, it... I think for, I think it was, it was you know, kind of like um, cool runnings, you know, where it's like yeah. this, these these guys are bobs in a bobsled team, which is another I movie saw, we'll have to do a review for. I saw a picture of those guys today, like all grown up. That was kind of neat. With, with, yeah. with John Candy? No. Uh, R.I.P. Like, that's how you know it was real because he wasn't in it. Um, yeah. No, it was just those guys all grown up. So that was kind of wild because like, they were already grown ups when you were a kid, right? But now they're like, they're yeah. gray and stuff, whatever. And and all I could think was like, you dead, man? Right? Because none of them are dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. None of them were dead, man. Yeah. Right, which is good. I'm happy for them because they always were concerned about one of them being. Yeah, you, dead you mon. can you can um, you can go to the bathroom now. Too late. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, another thing. So you you've lived in the the Northeast for you know last few years. You're back in Florida now, but the, I just I've seen these videos of like these RoboCop police officers that are like all out and about New York. Was that there when you were there? Like it looks kind of like it's like the shape of grimace the McDonald's character, but like on wheels and it, it makes a noise kind of like from the movie, the warriors, like that, like that, like background sound that was playing. All yeah. Time. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, yeah, they, they just came out with those. They, I think it's called, okay. I think it's called the K eight. Um, or it's like I don't a night think, strike not, or something like that. Yeah. Was, yeah. And like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's where the K comes in. So I think, or it's like K six or something. Um, well, what's, so yeah, what's, they, what's more embarrassing is, is like, is it more embarrassing to get like got by the bicycle police officer or by the robot? Because I feel like both of those piss me off equally. Like if we're being honest, I would, the, it's definitely the bicycle cop because they, they actually arrest you that, uh, the K eight or whatever it's called that it, it, I don't know if you're a doctor who fan looks like a dial a uh, dialogue or what a dialect. It's just, it's it. just, a, <laughs> Um, it's just a box with cameras in it. That's, that's all it is that, and it, you know it costs, it costs like $9 an hour, but that's, that's literally all it's, you know, on, on the trail in, in Tallahassee, the blue light system, that's sure. all it is. It's just, it's, it's just there. So in case something goes down, they have a camera that can watch it. Yeah, I, I, I guess it's that's not, fine. It's not just... stopping anybody. I mean, because like I, I think if that thing comes up to you, it catches you doing something, and you're like, "Hang on, let me go grab my ID real quick." Like, I, 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 I love, I love that I could lie to it, right? It's, it's like yeah, yeah. it can't really intimidate me, and it, and it moves at three miles per hour. So I'm like, "What's it gonna do?" Yeah. The only so it, with the times changing, it's not a huge deal, but it does weigh 420 pounds, which I'm like, that's also kind of funny. That's that's really not that much. But it's a 420 is like the big pot thing. So like obviously, oh, cool go, with gotcha. it now, but if yeah, you yeah. had gotten arrested by the 420 robot, like I would be livid. I would like insult. Yeah. Injury is, is, that's the that, I mean, yeah, that would basically be like me running you down. Can you <laughs> can you imagine you're like you're the one guy in your group that got arrested and like the cop is my size? <laughs> I mean, like, the guy must be twice your size then. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, well, missing, you missing you limbs or something. You, like, you don't even I, have to. You don't even have to run away from the thing. You just have to like walk past a puddle of water. Yeah, right. Like, oh, over you know, it just, it, just, it, just, it just spins out. Um, yeah, and woo, I am like like R two D two. Yeah, kind of, it's, just, it's just spinning out, and then I, I mean, I don't. They're not. They're not uh, at the ter what terminal level or on the whatever the track level. They're only keeping them in like the you know the hallways and stuff. I wouldn't trust that thing behind me. I mean, it's it's yeah. a four hundred it's a four hundred fifty pound Roomba. 
Can you imagine you're like you're you're next to the tracks and like this thing just starts creeping up behind you? I wouldn't trust it. You know, it. it would be pretty it would be pretty remarkable if they taught that thing how to pick up trash too. Like if it was actually a Roomba. <laughs> I mean, there's so much trash and we got this technology that's probably not going to solve any crimes. Can we just make it pick up fucking garbage, dude, so it's not so gross in New York or like yeah. somehow rats can get inside of it and then we just dispose of them? I don't I don't know, dude. Like just make it's, it a little it's more a, It's a rat trap. It's just a big rat trap. If it was a big rat trap, I'd be so on board because I think yeah. there's got to be a solution to that problem. And, you know, I think we're getting closer to it, but we're not we're not using our heads all the way. And if I become governor of New York, we're going to turn all these <laughs> robot cops in, into just big rat collectors. And well, what are we going to do with the rats? Don't worry about it. Forget about, about it. it. Like, we're just going we're, we're to take care of them. The, the pro- I think the problem there might come in that there you're going to get some smart rats to, like, take over the robot. And then and then you have these rat controlled robots. <laughs> Pushing people, pushing people on off of subway platforms. <laughs> like you just look down at like like where the sub where the train comes by, and there's just like a, one of those robot things down there, like eating trash. Like what is what is going on? The <laughs> we all we did is that's grow New the York, rats baby. Yeah. That's, that's New, New York. York, baby. We got robot <laughs> rats. All right, all right. One last thing, and we can wrap this up. It's been a pleasure having you. I saw this story that happened over the last like week or two about these uh these this airline that ran into a little bit of a predicament because these like there was like 14 sumo wrestlers that tried to get on a flight have you seen this article oh no i know i haven't seen that really 14 sumo wrestlers try to get on an airplane and immediately it causes a bit of chaos because they're like the average weight of a passenger apparently is like 160 pounds and like all these dudes were averaging not in america 275 right yeah good point but they're yeah. all average 275 which i'll say is also a pretty embarrassing weight for a sumo wrestler um like yeah. 275 mark but they're also they're, so it turned out they're like high school versions so i think that's <laughs> that's kind of they're they're, they're up and comers right yeah so maybe a, a sumo high school that that's a great Di- that's a great disney channel tv show sumo, sumo high, school. high school oh dude because yeah. i haven't seen the japanese disney sumo movie. high i don't think they're Sumo. <laughs> I would watch that show. I would. I would. I would. I would. I would run home. Well, I would. I would try to run home. I would jog and, at a, like a brisk pace to watch Sumo. <laughs> and it finally be the first school where they could pick on the skinny kid. You yeah, know what exactly. I mean? Like, and the kids it's like, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't seem to fit in, and I don't get why. <laughs> uh, and e- even the dude, skinny kid still so got a little bit of weight on him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like gotta, and he goes we, to we sumo gotta, practice gotta, one day and like he kind of does something good and everyone's like, "All right, yeah, you're okay." Oh, like, yeah, wow, yeah, it's right. it's it's, like, yeah. it's the it's the big cultural. But his shift dad is school. like gigantic. Yeah, yeah. What if his dad's like gigantic and he's like, "You're a big dishonor to our family." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the, the kid, superhero the kid, kid that like, doesn't have the powers. He's like, like I just don't want to be a sumo wrestler, Dad. I want to go to Dad. school. I want to. I want to go play baseball like Shohei Otani. He's like Shohei yeah. Otani is a waste of talent. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine if he focused his life on the sumo industry? What yeah. he could have been? He could have been somebody. He could have been a contender. <laughs> oh, what hit a hit a little baseball? Throw it hundred miles an hour. Who's this yeah. guy? Nobody. He's a nobody. Yeah. He'd get he'd get <laughs> pushed over. That's that's the best yeah. part about it. It's like. It, Does the, that look the, like a guy who could handle a 300 pound man coming at him? No, no, no. He'll never be Yakuza. Oh, man. The kid, the kid's like at lunch and like his lunch box is like the size of a, you know, back, like, like a, like a rolling backpack and he's just throwing it away every day. He's like, I don't, I'm not trying to do all that. Right. Yeah. Dad's like, we heard what's been going on at school. He's like, what are you talking about? They show him the camera footage. Like yeah. you've been throwing your lunch away. You haven't yeah. been eating the food we've been getting. You know how much that costs his family every day? <laughs> I'm, I'm all about it sumo high S- sumo high but but anyway the, the, that's a hilarious or even a pixar i mean that'd be a great pixar yeah, right, yeah. Too. i mean that'd be so good um i mean there's so many ways we can go with this sumo high um it was i just thought, i thought it was so funny of like being the airport attendant and like the first three to four of them rolling up to be like we're checking in and they're like oh, okay okay that's fine and then and then like like calling the manager and being like we got a situation like i don't know how to explain this to you but not one not two 14 
amateur sumo wrestlers are trying to get in this flight we're gonna breach capacity here like yeah. get, they had to shuttle them to another airport and get them on a different flight because really? they were worried about weight restrictions yeah and stuff. yeah of course like that's that's a tough day and then the kids were saying they're like we all kind of joked about it they they were they were actually kind of joking about like what are they yeah, gonna yeah. do about all this weight and then it <laughs> happened like <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> we were joking. Like we thought it was a joke. We laughed the about how one... funny it would be. <laughs> the one kid, they said the kid was like, yeah, you know, it, it was pretty bad, but especially the middle seat. And I'm like, listen here, buddy. All right. If you, maybe you've never flown before, but I weigh 230 pounds, give or take the middle seat sucks for me too. All right. Yeah, like yeah. it's not yeah. just, <laughs> it's not just you. Like there's pretty much nobody on earth who goes to the middle seat. Like I, you know, I yeah. kind of like this. I, I like being in between two other people. Yeah. It's real um, comfy, it's real not, cozy. Yeah. Not good. Yeah, but so I listen, think that's, it, if you're, if you're uncomfortable, think about the other two people that are, have to sit next to you. That's yeah. That is when I, when I fly and I, I always take the aisle seat. I, I don't understand big people that take the, the middle seat or the window seat. Just because, I mean, maybe it's because I'm taller, but I always take the aisle seat so that I can put my leg in the aisle. Of course. That just immediate room. Um, but it's not even so much like, oh, it's like this is going to be a burden to me. Like, or I don't want to be uncomfortable during the flight. It's like, no, my whole, the whole thought process is I don't want to be a burden to the person next to me. Like, that's the whole yeah. thing. And so, yeah, the idea of like a sumo wrestler saying like, oh, you know, the, the middle seat was bad. It's like. Yeah, think about how the other people around you felt. Oh, dude, and like you know, the three of them couldn't take a row. So like, no. you know, I feel like you. I think about like Southwest, right? Because they 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 have like that weird ordering system. So imagine these yeah. are the last people on the plane. And you're like, look at we're like, when is it gonna <laughs> stop? Like, when are they gonna stop boarding? Yeah. Because like, I'm sitting in the aisle, and there's we got you know a couple middle like you know I don't I'm just looking down, like don't pick this row, don't pick this row, because yeah. like it's gonna be tough. I've I've sat in a row before that was like guys my size and bigger that I didn't know before, like significantly bigger than me. And it's tough. And it was an exit row because we all go for that, right? We're yeah. like, yeah, like I want to sit but yeah, who doesn't want to sit there? You know, like yeah. that's a little bit bigger, you know? So I would I, I, I would be per I would be perfectly fine with someone at the airport in charge of like looking up profile pictures on Facebook and being like, Okay, like here's how we're gonna organize the plane. You're a little old lady. You sit with the big. You sit with the big fat guy. You, here's three average sized yeah. people. Y'all sit together. I would be totally okay with them. Just sit, like as long yeah. as I know, like, hey, as long as I get an aisle, I don't care. And maybe just a little bit of a combine, like right outside the gate for the exit row, because like, you know, they, they, the lady asked me the other day. She's like, "Are you willing and able the event of emergency landing?" I'm like, I look around, I'm like, lady, I'm the most qualified guy you got here. Like, yeah. for being honest, <laughs> this is a this like, is a like, very like, clear and concise verbal yes. Yeah, yeah. Not only will I do it for you, I'll be the best emergency exiter you've ever had before. Like, yeah. In the event, I'm like, let's make this happen. Like, let's not even joke around anymore. I'm, I'm like, going to show off my skills. I want to let you know something. I'm not going to sleep. I take this job very seriously, right? You know, like, I don't drink on these flights either. I was actually pretty hammered as I'm saying all this. But, like, I was like, this actually kind of happened. <laughs> but I, I, and, I'm, and I'm just like, I'm like, did you question? I'm like, watch me pick up this bag. And I'm like, one-armed it, like, up there. I'm like, yeah, that door is going to be no problem. The problem yeah. is going to be getting around all these sumo wrestlers you got sitting over here when they obviously go into cardiac <laughs> arrest on the fucking, you know, crash of the plane. Like, that's my problem. Yeah. Like, I can't move this guy. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I, I'll uh, <laughs> I, I am, I'm not, like I said, it's the biggest thing when I fly is I don't want to be a burden to the person I'm sitting next to. I would be, I, you're always looking like waiting for that last person to come on the plane. Imagine like the one, like you see the sumo wrestler come on. You're like, shit. Okay. So here we go. It's game time. Where is he going to sit? And then he gets about three rows in and then you see another one come in you're like, oh my <laughs> God, there's two of them. And then, like, okay, so yeah, then, uh, yeah they must be brothers. The they're, they're traveling for, yeah, for yeah, yeah. this event like, oh or something. Oh my God, yeah. there's three of them. Just like every <laughs> single person is, every person who already has somebody sitting next to them is just praising <laughs> God at that point in time. Just like, oh, thank God. We're sitting. And they're going to look at each other like, I'm but happy that, to be with you right now. At that point, you start recruiting from the other side. Like, do you want do you want to come over here? This this one here, like, because like by like ten deep, you're starting to realize you're like, this isn't gonna end well for any yeah, of yeah. us. Like, we're all this is a, this we're is all a sick joke. This is a sick yeah, right? joke. I'm never flying Frontier again. 
It'd also be <laughs> it'd also be pretty funny to hand those guys peanuts and be like, I hope this can hold you over for <laughs> yeah. a couple of hours. Yeah. Would you would you like some peanuts? Uh yes, peanuts, plural. Give me all the peanuts. How many uh, bags yeah. are you allowed to give me before it costs me money? I will say this. I, I never understood so I don't I don't try and like um glorify being a big guy at all. Like I hate seeing the TikTok videos when they're like, This is how I travel as a big person and like there it's oh, all come on, it's man. all like you're, if you're a I'm hotel, a you should. If you're a hotel, you need to do this to accommodate me. Like I completely understand that I have put this situation on myself, and I always feel like thank you for the minor accommodations you do give me. <laughs> Flying Delta is awesome because I've had I've had nothing but good experiences on Delta, and I have no problem saying like, "Hey, can I get an extender?" The people I see the people whisper like, "Can I get it?" And it's just like, it is what it is. It's like get an extender. But the, the Delta ladies that are like, here, here you go. And they give you two Biscoff cookies, like two of the packages. Ooh, you're like, yeah. I mean, if you get an extender, I think it should go without saying you get double the like accommodations. Yeah. Like the, you get you get two you get two snacks, you get two drinks, like no two questions drinks. asked. Yeah. Like, yeah, like they're, they're just there's an issue with size in America. where We don't totally accommodate for that of like, yeah, you know, like. Even me, I'm I'm not I'm still a bigger guy, but there's times where I'm like I should get more of something because I'm bigger, right? Like it's just like yeah. how, how that works. Like I can also see it go the other way. With me in mind, yeah, yeah. I can also see it going the <laughs> other way where it's like, sir, we gave you an extender, so we're not going to give you any biscuit cookies. Like, like it, that really would be my make you upset. That would they be really my make you upset. Like, I don't know, dude. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you really want in a way, you're right. <laughs> mad guy on a plane in the middle of the air. You want to see? Give me the cookies, you angry? You want to see me hangry on this flight? Yeah. No, you do not. All right, yeah. Willing and That's... able? Oh, I will stop up this entire walkway here. <laughs> Nobody's getting I'm... off this plane. I just you're being you being so confident in your like survival skills to the to the flight attendant. At a certain point, it's like it has to go like, wow, I'm really like excited. He's in the it almost becomes like, I think this guy might I think this guy might be trouble. He I might think be he up might to he, yeah. he might be doing something just to show off. My make a wish is that I can save an entire airplane, like yeah. in, in, in an event, in the event of a water landing. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt this episode, but this is actually the end of the episode. We had some technical difficulties that forced us to end this early. You didn't miss too much. And honestly, it wouldn't be a great first episode if things just went perfectly, right? All, all you missed was me continuing to elaborate on how cool I think it would be to save an aircraft full of people. I hope that never happens, but they shouldn't mention it if you can't dream about what it would be like. So it's really their fault. I had a great time with Coach Doug's. Make sure you follow him, like him, all that stuff. Like, subscribe, follow this podcast. Share it with your friends. Give me some cool comments. Seriously. Seriously. Love some good comments from you guys. Sorry if you can hear a dishwasher in the background. That's just my dishwasher going off. But we'll be back soon with another episode, another fun guest. That's the goal, at least. And uh, until next time, just stay greasy and enjoy your life. Good night, everybody.